if you want to save your game in Unity, follow these steps. Right click and add an empty object. Name it Save Game. Add a component, a C -sharp script. I will call it Player Data Manager. Add another object which will be for the player data. I will show you why do you need two scripts. Go to Visual Studio and remove mono behavior because it won't be part of any object in the scene. This will be a serializable object because saving requires serialization. Remove void start and update. In the player data you need these values. Public float, position. You also need the health and the score count. The position of your player is a float while the score and health are integers. However, these are just the values. You need to add them into the player data manager. That will be the script that will save or load the values in your project. Public void save game and a void load game. They need to be public because you can see them in your game only if they are public. Now you need the values defined in player data. Public float transform. You can call it transform or position. No matter how you call. Public int health and int score. All those values are from the player data script. Now you have to put them in the save game and load game. The first line of code that you need... No, don't use player prefs. Because we use player prefs only for player preferences, not for some complex data. Then you should use player data. This loads the player data into the script. So the position from that script is equal to the new float. I will show you how to type that float position. It's very easy, just like the player transform position. But because it has three elements, it has to have the x, y and z. Rename position to player transform. Player transform position x. Now copy it and change it to Y and Z. Now it can no longer be float. It has to be a transform. Player data. Health. You need the reference to the health. Game manager health. Because that's how to read the value. You don't read it from player data, you read it from game manager. And the score is from the score manager. Although it's not called score, it's score count. String JSON. JSON utility to JSON is the way how to make all those things loaded into a JSON file. String path. Application Persistent Data Path The file will be called playerdata.json So that will be the syntax of the string path. System IO File Write all text. The write all text requires a path which is the path where your data is located, and JSON. It requires JSON utility, it won't work without. When you're loading your game, you also need the string path, the persistent data path. It has to load the things that have been saved in player data JSON file. Pay attention, the name of the file must match in save game and load game. 
now you need an if statement. If file exists, the file which is located on the path string json loads the input output file read all text path this line of code tells the script to read all the text from the path file player data loaded data json utility from json player data JSON. This is the line of code that loads the data from a JSON file. To load files from JSON, you need to use JSON utility. Now it's time to update player's transform position. Player transform dot position. New vector tree. You have to use the x, y, and z values defined before. Now you have to do it in loaded data position. The position is an array. So use position like this. Position 0, position 1, and position 2. 0, 1, and 2 are the x, y, and z values of transform. Now to load the position, you need to add the vector 3 loaded position. The player transform position and loaded position are both same values. The next code should be player transform dot position equals loaded position. And with this line of code you can load the position that has been saved. Now it's time to load the values from health and score. Game manager health is equal to loaded data health. And to read score count, which is the score of the game, load it from score manager. Else, if there is no saved document and if there is no saved file, it should debug the warning. File not found. Write it as debug log warning. Save the script and test. Click the player and drag it into transform. You don't have to touch other parts of the player data manager script. Now go to canvas and add a button. This button will be for testing. To make this button save data, you have to go down and set it in on click. You have to set on click to save game. Do it by dragging save game and selecting save game. Now change the text to save. Duplicate that button and instead of saying save, rename it to load. Now don't forget to do this. Go back to the button object and select load game. Now play the game to see if it works. One thing I don't like is because my player doesn't return to the saved position. It stays on the same place. Let's see how to fix. If character controller is enabled, con simple move. This tells the script to check if the character controller is enabled. You need to set it enabled false. Then you can enable it after one second. But you can also put that line after score manager. So try to play it again to see if it works. Wow, it works! Now you know how to make your own save and load system in Unity. You can use it for saving progress. And this is very useful for making new games for loading data. 
If you find this video helpful, consider subscribing and liking this video. I will make more content in the future. Have a good day.